Geekology. I'm David Sevilla. I'm Sven Harvey. And tonight's episode, Sven is a big fat liar. Mm, apparently. Uh, you said one month of Transformers. Yes, would you lie? Um, we have a deal. So many Transformers, so many Trek. Uh, no, uh, I could be wrong. H have Hasbro started making really interesting My Little Ponies? Yeah. Then, not even ones that turn to guns. Then why am I looking at Transformers? Right, well, we're actually not doing Transformers. <laughs> uh, okay, now, <laughs> we did a whole episode on Primes, yeah. so I, I recognise Prime, yeah. and I recognise, I'm going to say it's a car of Prime, because the paint's that shiny, yes. metallic -y car stuff. Ultra Magnus. Yes. Hmm, you are learning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it's some sort of painful simulation thing. Yes, yes it is. Okay, so... Resistance is futile. <laughs> if we're not doing the toys... Yes. There's three and only one box, so we yeah. can't be doing the packaging. No. So what are we doing? What are we doing is, uh, well, it's going to be basically add-ons. Not made by Hasbro or Takara. These are add-ons for figures that are currently available from them to make them better. You know, we need to have some sort of like production meetings or something where we talk about what we're going to film before we actually put a camera <laughs> up and start filming. Okay, so third party add ons. Yes, basically. Right. So okay. we have now one. I know they do third party stickers. Yes. And I know that there's a couple of cool, actually, there's two to my knowledge in Germany and one in England, people with their 3D printers doing replacement guns. Yes. There's quite a lot of replacement with that kind of thing going on with 3D printers, actually, where people are just doing whatever they want for their toys and they're making it available to other people. Okay. Which is fair enough. All right, so what's special about this one? Um, well, basically, these are add-ons that are actually being mass-produced. Mass-produced add-ons by third party? Yeah. Basically, so it'll be ma okay. manufactured mainly in China, in, if not all in China. Mm -hmm. um, some of the develop some of the um, actual designs are actually done in the UK and various other places around the world, but okay. there seems to be quite a little industry in the UK specifically. Mm. Um, because we're British and we do things like oh, that. Uh, <laughs> UK fans setting up a little cottage based industry around their thing they love. Oh, oh no, that would never catch on. No. <laughs> Um, the first one of which, now, um, first off, before I go too far, um, I've got to say a big thank you to Roger Oliver and his friend um, Robin over in Hong Kong, I think he was, okay. who sorted out, who sent me the KFC um, add-on and the Optimus Prime version of this, because this is the Autoracus version. Mm -hmm. Optimus Prime one's already been deployed on Prime here. Uh, just, just before we go on, because obviously yeah. I, I've been assimilated, but there are... Yes. Some people who watch our show who, who aren't particularly au fait with all the little companies. So KFC is not a mail away special. No, no, it's um it's actually uh Keith's Fantasy Club. It's the name of the Interesting name. Interesting name. Yeah, I hope there's nothing battery operated coming from it. <laughs> um but yeah, it's it's um it's basically just one of one of many small companies who are now putting out things. Okay. Now um I'm not hugely into the third party full toys. Right. Um, but I'm guessing because they're not licensed. Because they're not licensed. And to be honest, they, they can be very, very expensive, but though they're still worth the money in a way. So Let me guess, very limited numbers, very limited numbers and higher yeah. production quality. Uh, yeah, okay. so and so. Well, some of the production quality can be a bit iffy, but it's just literally these are home produced nice. stuff. It's yeah. like it's like a medium motherboard compared with a PC motherboard. Yeah, that gotcha. Home. Situation, um, so that's that, that. That's that one add on there now. Um, just to make it clear, this is in fact a, a Takara um, for Cybertron Optimus, and this is the UK slash American version of it. Yes. So he has been pimped red, up quite a bit. Pink, red, oh. pink. It's it's it's, it's, it's red. Pink. Honest. It's pink. He's had stickers added, which are. Oh, oh, metallic pink, and uh, as well as, as well as other colours, which are basically that's a set from Repro labels. Okay. To add him, it gives him some of the details that were on in the game itself. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the Optimus Prime version of that add-on, uh, which consists of two guns essentially, mm -hmm. but they also split up. And now they can. Oh, I won't split these ones up because I'm going to split the Magnus ones up in a minute. But these basically can be deployed in the first or. 
on the leg or on the arm and so on and so forth. So he basically gives him some a bit more weaponry. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can actually split them up. I'll do Magnus with Magnus at the moment. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show you that off a little bit better in a second. Um, as well as sending me those two, um, Roger and um, Robin also sent me this, which, to be honest, is something I'd probably never have ended up getting because it's not the cheapest thing in the world. Mm. Um, and uh, it, it, though it is really, really nice. Now, what this does is it's an add-on set of armour for Magnus right. to give him a bit more of a Magnus feel. All right. Because at the end of the day, this is just a retool of the Optimus Prime figure. Yeah. What they did really is recolour it, give but him a new head. didn't change the head. Yeah, and gave him a, a, a sword. Mm. Which probably should have come with Prime in the first place. It was sort of because it was Prime running around with a sword in the game as it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and what this basically does is it forms up around it and gives him... It's a, an exosuit. It's an exosuit. It basically gives him the full-blown I'm Ultra Magnus and therefore one bit and kicking ass oh, okay. kind of mode. Because at the end of the day, Ultra Magnus kind of was a soldier. Though his function originally was city commander. Mm. So Autobot City, he was in charge of that. He did tend to be much more... Uh, it actually said in, in some of his profile details that he's actually much more um, comfortable in a role where he's just a soldier mm. uh, and basically taking command as wrong prime. Okay. Um, but to be a soldier and to kick some to the house, he does rely on his trailer usually and combines with that to mm. form the Ultramagnus people know because the Ultramagnus post the, the, the white prime isn't really used in any media no. as such. And what this basically does is takes the full Cybertron Magnus and box him up. Okay. Um, which is quite cool. Well, I've not opened this yet, so we'll have a look at that moment. I've also got to say a big thank you to Adam, um, who sent me this as well, which is the Wolf Cybertron Magnus, because I haven't got one of these yet uh, for myself. Um, again, I think Roger had, uh, Roger had quite a bit to do with that as well. Yeah. Um, and this turned up in the post a couple of days ago, which was just in time for this, because otherwise one of these primers is going to end up in there because it is compatible. It just oh. looked a bit strange. Um, because they're actually... It's like molds. So. Yeah, well the thing is, this is actually a version of this that's prime. Which is, because this is um, Pandora's Box Zero 1 and Pandora's Box Zero 2, which is the prime version. Right. Um, so, what we'll do is, we'll have a look at this KFC add-on first. Um, we'll go through popping that onto Magnus. Take his sword off. And just go for a moment. So there we go, Ultra Magnus. Basically, I mean, it's literally, if you look at it, it's the same mould except for the head. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, just painted differently. It's amazing the difference paint skin can make. It really, well, that's, uh, you know. Yeah. I have no idea who, mm-hmm. well, obviously I know this has been. But, yeah. I mean, specifically, I wouldn't have known. I only recognised that one due to the paint. Yeah. There is no mistake in the paintwork on that. Not quite, exactly. Um, this is a bit fiddly. To say the least. <laughs> and my fingers are tiny. So I should find it easier than most people. I would have thought. Yeah, never mind. There we go. Nice, yeah, put that up. That was your uh, up. yes, good kitty voice when you were doing the anime. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like oh, you, Pussy Cat. Yes. You can't tell there's a Transformers convention coming up. No. <laughs> Oh, uh, there we go. Right, let's put those two. I'm on. just so sorry that I'll be at a Pratchett con. No, you're weekend. not. You're lying. Uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad the Pratchett con's not in the same place like it used to be in the past. Oh, that would have been. Yeah, that would have been an interesting crossover <laughs> group. <laughs> Wait, this, we've got. We, we've also said this year there's the uh, the quilt con is still, is taking place at um, the NEC. Mm. Yeah, no, so it's going to be full of um, of nice. ladies who, who do quilting, like last year. Um, there we go, just pop that on. And we've got the spare, which I don't know where to put. You know what, I really should have had something funny to say to that, but I've actually been to the quilting one. Have you? Oh. Have you now? Well, I got a discount ticket because I did the Hobbycraft ones. Okay. And don't knock the Hobbycraft ones. So there are people there like 3D printers, yeah. uh, ribbon printers, uh, the, the vinyl cutters as well. Oh, okay. So, you know, there's some really cool tech there. And uh, yeah, for now I went and checked out. You know, they they have some interesting equipment. Some of the silk screen printing that yeah. they use is is stunning. If if you're yeah. going to make uh, fan made costumes, I actually had uh, a word with 
um, one woman on the booth yeah. who had a, a really big silk screen printer and she's done me the material for a next gen Romulan. Oh, hello. Yeah, because you know that material. You yeah, can't no. get that material no, no, to no, bugger. No. So. so there we go. Right, um, I've actually had to take the, the little clips out that I showed earlier and those basically fit in there. Yeah. Um, one way or another. So we can deploy those in different places. So you very much the quality on this is really good for yeah. It. I mean these these this is not an expensive these are not an expensive add-on in any stretch of imagination, and they are mass produced rather than just being three D printed. Yeah, it? but but well yeah you can tell immediately it's not three D printed. But I mean the mold point on it it's got three little mold points and they are tiny and the yeah. only way you can tell it is just by the sh uh, the the grain running through the plastic. So. Yeah, that's cool. That's really quite cool. So we've done that. We've got little holes in the side. On we go. Bingo. Suddenly we look very, very much more like Magnus. Just from those little bits of add on. It's amazing the difference it yeah. makes, isn't it? Right, okay, okay. let's get this guy <coughs> open. I've never seen this either one of these myself before. This is actually not the full version of the product that it was supposed to have been originally. Okay. When it was prototyped, it was going to be, it was, the, the armour was going to turn into a trailer for either Prime or Magnus. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, going, it was going to work out to be quite a chunk of money and people were kind of put off from it. Um, what I would suggest is there will be a link up there for a review from Ben's Collectibles, an awfully nice chap Ben, um, who managed to get his mitts on one of the prototypes to have a look at before they decided what route they were going to go with it. The whole project almost got cancelled from what I understand, um, but they decided to go with just the exosuit parts so they could build the big robot. And then should the sell well enough, this and the Proctimus Prime version, they will then release the other parts to make up the trailer. Oh, okay, that makes, makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Absolutely. It sounds like so, something Kickstart would be uh, jumping all over. Yeah, it's, it's kind of screaming Kickstart, but you know, without peeing off Hasbro too much, hopefully. Mm. Um, but well, see, the thing is, I, I can imagine that having spoken to some of the people from Hasbro, and they do take this yeah. very seriously when it comes to not only the marketing but the, the copyright infringements. Yeah, exactly. um, but they do tend to whistle a little bit and look in the other direction for some things. Yes, I'm I mean this is the thing, is they were but they've very much been whistling and looking in the wrong direction for repro labels. Yeah. I mean, they did say Which is to, such a good job. Yeah. I mean this is the thing, they did say to them you can't advertise the fact that what you do except yeah. to uh, except to people who already know who you are. Yeah, um, which is kind of fair, enough, not, fair yeah. enough in a way, but they haven't shut them down and haven't really caused problems for them because at the end of the day, they enhance figures. It might be old figures, it might be new figures, but at mm. the end of the day, it's making them look good. It's making them look good, and if it's selling more of the official product, Fine. it's not going to be a problem. Again, with this one, because you need to sell more, you'll sell more of those because you need the official product to be inside it. So mm. you know, I don't see a huge problem with that. Where you do have problems is when you've got third party products that are completely that complete on their character. own and they're yeah. using very much the, the look of the characters that are owned by Hasbro, mm. then they've potentially got a problem. But Hasbro don't really seem to have gone after them in any way, shape or form. Well that's probably because of limited numbers, if they're probably looking at mass producing. Yeah. Then but it's interesting, Hasbro starting to learn from them, it would appear. Yeah. Um, there was one company who actually took the Masterpiece Jets mm. and uh, engineered them slightly differently. They're blatantly, obviously, yeah. reverse engineered copies to start with. But then you notice there was differences to the legs and stuff like that. And very similar change to the legs happened to the official, yeah, the official ones later on down the line when they did new versions of them. Cool. So it's like, hmm, it looks like someone's learning from someone there on those lines. So, right, what we've got here. Um, in there we've actually got the suit of armour, you notice there's a big gap in the middle, that's where yeah. Magnus is going to be sitting. We've also got um, two pairs of hands, mm -hmm. uh, a pin, um, various other bits, I mean that's an energon scythe, sword, um, a gun of some description I assume, some other bits and pieces. But not having opened the instructions yet. I, I like the fact that they've put the pin in to, to keep yeah. it held. Into now, what I think that is there, that's a replacement pelvis. 
for Magnus yeah. to give it a bit more oomph because at the end of the day this is designed this this is designed to work to with only these work legs, with those legs not those not legs. legs so you know that makes a lot of sense um, so yeah, let's have a look in, in the instructions because um, this is an entirely new world to me it's a brave new world yes brave new world I should stop singing there. Um, <laughs> oh no, that's nice. They uh, they even put a piece of bobble in to, uh, yeah, to specifically it hold it so that it didn't flop in the bottom. Oh, that's, wow, that's, that's nice. Lovely. Look how fine the ball and socket joints are for the uh, the wrap around on the chest. Ooh. I mean, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't want to play with that too much. No, I mean, this, this, but, this, is, uh, this is pretty much sexy. This is the reason why it's 16 plus on the box. So now we've, we've folded pretty much all the parts out and this now merges on to the main figure very carefully by the look of it. Um, beware of the slot position, okay? I'll beware of the slot position. Always beware of the slot, slot position. position. Slot position, okay. So, okay. Okay. so docking. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. This is going to be quite fiddly. But at the end of the day, it's not a kid's toy. Well, yeah. Hi and welcome back. You've just missed Sven swearing quite a bit, <laughs> fiddling about and finding out some very cool things. So, right. firstly, let's lock this down properly. I've put the um, the main upper body part on, so mm -hmm. let's lock this into place. So that, now obviously without the replacement pelvis, he's a bit floppy, but that's pretty cool. Now we do that have... That is very cool. That is very, very cool, to be fair. To go from what well, is essentially a fourteen pound toy, and you had this, and suddenly you've got something that's this epic. Frankly, mm. it's pretty cool. Now you do have various fist options. It's always good to have options with the fisting. Yes. Oh dear God. <laughs> <laughs> right there we go. Let's pop this fist in. Um, <laughs> so there's an ball and sockets as well. Um, they have been told it can be a little bit fiddly to get on and off, but that seems to go for quite fine. And what's quite cool is that um, you can open up the um, the legs, and it's a storage place for the fists. Which you got to admit That's is genius, because when you've got them in the cabinets on display, yeah, it saves you having lots and lots and lots exactly. of little bags kicking well. around. Now there is actually a face plate, which I'm not going to use because Magnus doesn't have a face plate in my head anyway. Um, and that can actually be stored in the backpack, around the back, mm. in there, which is quite cool. There's a little hole for it, so I might do that eventually, but for the moment it's staying with the head. Right, we've now got the fist sorted out, so you can actually hold something. Now, there are various options with the, um, uh, with the weaponry. You can tell I'm a bit of a newbie when it comes to this type of product, though, can't you? <laughs> right. Um, Okay, here we've got uh, an Energon axe stroke scythe thing. It's a scythe, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and that can be combined with the main gun that comes with the original product. Yes, because, you know, if the gun fails, slapping a sword on it will really help. <laughs> oh, oh, the bullets didn't get you. See how you feel about this. <laughs> so apparently oh. it just goes like that. And, oh, I've got it upside down. Ignore me, ignore me, ignore me. Mm, yes, because that's what you want near the handle, a walking great blade. And it clips onto there. Does look quite cool. That does look cool, to be fair. Um, what you can do as well is the double barrel, whatever it looks, whatever thing, that actually folds out and can be used with a sword. So he has... A staff weapon. A staff weapon. Which is pretty that's cool. That's cool. Okay, that's cool. Uh, to be fair, there's nothing so far that don't makes me think what the hell. This is pretty cool, and this is, I guess, why we've got the open hands as well. Yeah, so you can grip it. You can grip that. Um, and then you can combine various parts together. Now, you can actually take the waist part out and turn that into part of the gun, but I'm not going to do that on this again. Oh, that's nice. You felt the hands? Yeah, they're, they're rubber. They're rubbery. That's, that's fantastic. Cool. Yeah, because so, the thing is with the um, Hasbro ones, hmm. they're solid plastic, there's no give where that. Holds that weapon quite yeah. well. So let's pop that hand yeah, off. Go on. You know you want to. I do. I, do. I just want to slip it in there. Matron. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Now mm. you see this one. Yeah. Like plastic. You see that makes sense. I like yeah. that. So we're looking pretty cool so far. I'll pop that in there. Now, if, if we, we had a little bit more stability there, to be fair. If you'd gonna, put the hip in, it's like... It's going to need the new hips, yeah. isn't it? Um, but that's pretty cool. I mean, you know, for a warrior, which is essentially what Magnus really supposed to be, mm. that's pretty cool, especially from when we're talking about the game for the Cybertron, which is where this is... Uh, originates. Like originates, yes. And it's, so, yeah, that that's... That's pretty epic. Now you do have the option of using the barrel, the, the staff barrel thing to make a bigger version of the gun so you actually turn it into a rifle. So that pops into there and suddenly we've got quite a nice rifle. Mm. So you can see Magnus um, on patrol with that, can't we? Very nice. I'd have to say I'm, I'm really quite impressed. I mean, I knew it looked good because I watched Ben's uh, review of the prototype. Mm. I was just thinking, wow. <laughs> um, but this is this is really really nice and it's going to look spectacularly brilliant on my full side from or side from display. Okay, so, so yeah, this is cool. What are we going to say? We're going to say that um, because it's third party, it's mm. one for people who are very specifically yeah. interested in completing the. The sets for specific shows rather yeah. than. I mean, for this one, you're talking about it's a video game that Magnus was only in it as DLC in the multi. Yeah. Uh, in the, the multi-player um, modes. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even in the storyline itself, but yeah. this really does have a look to it that complements the rest of the line. I mean, if we compare it with uh, the, the Primes now. Now, you've said that um, when it comes to third party weaponry, you've, yeah. you've purchased some of that. Having physically now got one of these, mm -hmm. would you be tempted to buy others? Yes. Finance see, is no, permissive, you can't permissive, take, permissive, no, you see, There you go, you can't say Because this, this, this is really quite a nice add-on. I mean, it's very much a very adult, very collector thing. It's something the kids shouldn't well, go anywhere near. Um, but this does really make. Magnus Magnus. Yeah. As silly as that might sound. I don't know, nothing beats making Magnus Magnus. Mm -hmm. Quite. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, very, very impressed. Love it. It's it's a fantastic uh, product. I mean, though though it's quite a lot of money, and I'll do a bit of research and pop down below okay. a couple of places to grab it from, um, right. the kind of pricing. But um, yeah, that's really quite nice. Right. Well, I'll let you have a look at it. Okay. Yes, yes. Let's, let's get, get the opinion of the person who's not going to gutch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> They've definitely kept in feel with the original toy, which, mm -hmm. yeah, so as a collectible, mm -hmm. I can really see that. I can see why people would feel enthusiastic about it. Um, I feel the quality is very good. Yeah. It, it's a shame I don't know the price now, so I can go up. You know, I think, I, I, I may be wrong, but I think it's somewhere in the 60s. You know what, for Transformers, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd recommend that, I really would. Although I have to say, whilst this is very good, I was very impressed by these. Yeah. I thought this was just a lovely little piece, very well made. Um, the fact that it comes apart and can be used in different ways on it, and it really, it made such a vast difference. Yeah, absolutely. And for such a simple piece, I was, I was genuinely impressed by that. So I think there was a lot of, um, care and attention put into these. Yeah. So, again, I and see a fifteen. Yeah. You know, if if you, it's a character you feel passionately about, or it's a piece that you you want to mod in, you know, an officialish way. And by officialish, I mean it looking professional and well yeah. made, rather than you know it being Hasbro. Yeah. Um, as for the bigger suit, my only criticism of this is the packaging. Really? Uh, I love the artwork, mm -hmm. love the fact that they've overlaid the silver, they've even gone through all the trouble of doing the flip open box, they've got velcro dots and this, but the cardboard is so thin. Mm. Really easy to dent. Yeah. I mean you can see here there's a couple of dents on that. So 
I would mark it down on the packaging because it's so thin. Yeah. But I hate to think how much that would have cost to have had made up. Yeah, quite. You know, I mean, it, it, that purely could just be a... It would have added way too much money onto the price of the yeah. toy to have a better box. And the thing is, is the internal packaging for the toy itself... Oh, now you see, now you see, now that's, that's different. Yeah. I, was in, I was impressed by the internal bubble, and I'll tell you why. Okay, let's face it, fairly standard. Yeah. Fairly standard for big toy companies. Mm. Fairly standard. This was what impressed me. Yeah. The fact that they'd gone to the trouble of making a piece specifically to fit under the breastplate for it to wrap around so that if you kept it in the box, it was perfectly in shape. Because that would have definitely flopped down mm. when moving about. Wouldn't have looked great on display. Yeah. So the fact that they went to the time and effort to put that in there, that really made it. So I was impressed by that. I'm surprised considering the quality of this and this, that the box was so thin. Mm -hmm. But look at the attention uh, to detail on the box. You know, yeah. it is, it, it's really nice. The, I'm not flawing the artwork on that. Mm. It, my only criticism is that the, the cardboard's a bit too thin. I mean, it, it's been knocked in one or two places yeah. and it's taken the shame straight off. Mm. Uh, but again, the cost of having it done must be horrendous. Yes, absolutely. So, Especially in small, in short runs, which yeah. I assume. And my only criticism, can I have the um, yeah. KFC one? My only criticism for the KFC one is that um, their own logo, the logo that he uses for it, he, he's chopped bits off mm. to, to get it to fit in with it. I think that's a shame. He obviously has pride for his work. Yeah. The artwork is lovely. Um, whilst I've got to admit that the KFC logo, in my opinion, is not the most attractive logo in the world, uh, it's obviously his style, his brand, it yeah. should be more centralised. Um, just because, you know, it's, if people are buying it, they, they know what they're looking for. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying you don't know that that is what it is, but I just feel it's a shame that, you know, he's designed himself up a nice little logo, and on both sides of it, it's been chopped. Yeah. Which, yeah, it. I personally think <laughs> that's a shame. I mean, he did. He did do something called. Um, uh, basically, it's a new order of Magnus mm. that was kind of masterpiece size, and that's one of the, that's the first big thing he's done. Really, and I think he's put the packaging for that. Is, is a lot better, and it's been. I'd really like to see the packaging for that. So I'll tell you what I did really like about the packaging for this little KFC thing. Um, the artwork on this side very nice. Yeah. The fact that it's blacked out on the other side and then the, the individual component pieces where they can be taken apart and modded yeah. i.e. put on yeah. to, is picked out and I just think that that's was really, really nice he's put so much thought and attention into it he obviously really cares about, about his brand so yeah um, I would say see the, these kind of things are hard to score I'd I'd give it a 10 out of 10, yeah. be because it simply is exactly what it's meant to be. Mm. So I've got no issue with that one. Uh, 10 out of 10 for the toy, Yeah. I'm marking down the packaging. Um, love the attention to detail. So that's going to hold an 8, a good solid 8. Mm -hmm. Because the artwork on the box is lovely, it's picked out really nice, the bubble is it's just yeah, it marks, it marks too easy. Mm. And I very much doubt that anybody's buying this going, I want to leave it in its box on display. Yeah. But they should have that option. Yeah. So, so and to be honest, this, because, uh, because this box is, is really nice, it's not going to be something that's just, just going to get thrown away. No, you're not going to throw it away. That's, that's I think, box. I, think yeah. I, I personally would have preferred a little extra spent on yeah. the box. Absolutely. But again, you know, it's third party. And it's awfully nice having the colour instructions. You don't yeah. even get that with official Hasbro stuff. Yeah. So, but the instructions yeah. are incredibly well done as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I like the fact that there's no language used. Yeah. Um, because obviously this is going to go in multiple places around yeah. the world. There's so. a little, little bit there's of a, Yeah, but it's tiny. It's tiny. It's, tiny. it's, not, it's not vital. No. 
Christ, so absolutely. And certainly nothing that Google Translate couldn't have banged out for no, someone. No, quite, so. absolutely not. There you go. Uh, are you going to give it a score? Um, you know something. Um, the little the, the KFC um, sets, 10 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't knock them because for what they do, they're fantastic. Um, I'm going to give him 9. No, it's weird. I'm giving it a ten, and you're giving it a nine. I'm giving it. A, well, Why are you giving thing. it a nine? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still. I, I, you're right with the box. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at it as a whole thing. So. Okay. Um, See, yeah. I had to score it differently. Yeah. I mean, I. I, tack, I mean, the, the box is lovely uh, and gorgeous, and it's, it is a shame it's not slightly thicker cardboard simply to maintain it. If yeah. Nothing else. Um, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. No. Um, the fact you've got the alternative hips is fantastic. Um, the various options with the weaponry is fantastic. The fact you can store the spare parts. The fact that they it. actually made their hands out of rubber so they can yeah. grip the toy, where the actual original toy is solid plastic. plastic. Um, this, this and really well designed. It gives it a nice feeling yeah. of depth. And considering how it's come to us with losing the trailer option, so on and so forth. Um, to keep the cost down, uh, there's nothing I can really mark it down for as such. Okay. So, you know, nine, nine and a half out of ten. Okay. I'm I, I really, really impressed. And considering this is the first time I've had something not made by Hasbro that's cost, that, that has a, a cost price to it more than about 15 or 20 quid to add on to something, I'm mm. very, very impressed with what this does, for, even for the money. So, well, yeah. that's marvellous. And if you have one of these at home, we'd love to hear your comments. You can subscribe to us here on YouTube. You can follow us on both Facebook and Twitter. There is the official Geekology website. Yes, there absolutely. are two live events coming up. We have Auto Assembly. Auto -assembly. Um, and this video might actually be released that weekend. Oh, Depending on how fabulous. it falls. We'll see how it works out. Okay. So, yeah, that'd be quite cool. And we have the official Pratchett Convention. Yes. Sadly, Terry will not be at it, Enough. but the convention Enough. itself is still going to be awesome. Absolutely. We have a Star Trek event yes. at the beginning of next year, which is First Cosmo Contact Day. Day. Yeah, that's in April 2015. That's looking really interesting. There's a couple of, no, well, there's four guests now um, on, on, online for that. So Marvelous. That's pretty cool. Um, and tickets are still available. So tickets are still available right now, uh, as we're filming at least. And um, it's not just Star Trek either, there is B5 and Battlestar yeah. and so on and so forth. It's more generic sci-fi, but with very much a Star Trek backbone to it. And that just leaves the one last thing that we need to mention, which is, why haven't you joined the put the yellow back in the back campaign? Yes. I know you haven't joined, because I've seen the list of people who have. <laughs> Come on, people, we want it back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank right. you for watching. Good night. Bye. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Jim Henson's studio, but Fraggle Rock, whilst very big, it's very is definitely uh, 
Well, I, I think... Muppetish? Yeah. <laughs> Muppetish. Muppetish. Ding, 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 ding. Muppetish. Ding, 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 ding. Muppetish. <laughs> oh, oh God. Have we lost it completely? Oh, pff, I never had it in the first place. That's a very good point. Yeah.